Unfortunately, this is an appropriate segue to a conversation that happened on Bill Maher's podcast club random with presidential candidate Marianne Williamson. They got into a real debate about how is America actually doing? Mm -hmm. And this is a debate that, you know, we've had a little bit on the show. You see it certainly playing out online where there's a certain group of people who's like, look at the unemployment rate. Look at, you know, inflation's going down. Actually, you know, modern America is wonderful and it's the best it's ever been and people are doing great and all this, you know, suicide rate, whatever, like I'm not paying attention to that. And you have other people who are saying, look at the number of people who are food insecure. Look at the suicide rate. Look at the overdose rate. Look at the number of people who are struggling. So anyway, that debate played out a bit between Marion and Bill Maher on his show. Let's take a listen. Medicare. But it's I'm not just, Medicare for all. Unemployment. It's Medicare. It's not Medicare for all. Well, That's Obama Obamacare is very getting very close to Medicare for we all. We still have 85 million yeah. Americans who are underinsured or uninsured. And you have yeah. to be really like kind of kind of buffered well, are, emotionally if you think 85 million people does not matter. No, I, no I'm, I hope I'm not the straw man who thinks 85 million No, I'm not saying that you are, okay. but I'm just saying when people say, oh, well, that doesn't matter. No, I, but I'm also saying that when you just ride around, you just see a country that does not look like it's falling apart. Bill. Like my eyes also matter. It matters what I read and what people tell me. It also matters that I just live in this world and I travel a lot and I'm out in the city a lot. And a lot of people are just living their best lives. And they're not, they're not all fucking rich. It's not all the top 20%. Uh, for all its horrible problems, this country still somehow, how we got through the pandemic and didn't go broke, I don't know. I mean, we probably will in the future. Maybe it's the inflation is, is part of that issue. But I just don't see a country where the people are just seething and unhappy when I'm out. And that has to count for something. You know where I was last night? I was speaking to teenagers on Skid Row. Do you know how many people are homeless in Los Angeles County on any given night? 70, <laughs> if you go 80, to Skid Row, thousand. you're going to... Okay. That's, that's my that's, point. You say not... you drive around, but where do you drive around? Okay. You don't drive too many miles. I, of course. Why would I go to Skid Row? That's kind of my point. So you don't really... You say, I don't see anybody no, going no, through that. I, that's well, right. Don't. You're not driving right. there. And most They're people more than don't. an underclass. Yes. There's this invisibilized... Yes. Field well, of suffering out there. It's not more than an underclass. It's an underclass. It's a large, a too large underclass that this country, that it's a scandal, that we we certainly can't seem to address it. No, 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 no. It's not that but, we can't address it. It's that in order to address it, you have to challenge the corporate bottom line. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that that moment there when Marianne's like, but where are you driving yeah. around? That kind of gets to the heart of it. There's, I watched this whole podcast, which I, I think it's worth watching. Mm. There's you know, very healthy exchange of ideas between the two of them. At one point, he makes a similar point. He's like, I was on Venice Beach and people are happy. People are doing great. Do you know, I just looked up median price of a home in Venice Beach $3.7 yeah, million. Dollars. Yeah, I was going to say. $3.7 million. Dollars. Listen, life is great if you're on Venice Beach. I love Venice Beach. Uh, you know, it's a pretty cool area. Um, that wouldn't be my metric of whether society is doing well. It's like, yeah, if you drive around Beverly Hills, I'm sure that's what you think. That clip is actually uh, one of the best illustrations of how class divide in this country really changes the way that we have a perception and why separation in particular of enclaves of super zip codes have created alternative right. realities. So if you live in an area where you have a median household income, the Washington DC is the best example. Uh, we have one of the richest areas in the entire country. I think it's like four out of the five richest counties in the United States surround Washington DC. So if you are in Bethesda County where the average person has a master's degree and you're at Whole Foods, yeah, life seems great. Everybody you know genuinely is doing well. Yeah. If you do it in Arlington County or Fairfax, oh, certain areas of Fairfax, uh, Loudoun County, you know, particular like enclaves, that's obvious. If you drive two hours south, we were talking about Richmond, north of Richmond. If you, let's say you drive two hours south to Farmville, Virginia, I don't know if it's two hours, but something further, like that. further, but anyway. Okay, yes. if you drive a little, well, now you're living in a whole other world. And the irony actually is here around DC is in the same cities, counties actually, you can go from actually like a, one of the wealthiest suburbs in the entire country and you could cross a county line and you can be in the straight up ghetto. Um, and that is exactly, exactly the point that I think Marianne was trying to illustrate. And the divide and the separation create 
causes people not to understand actually on a bigger macro level what is really happening. And that's also why subjectively kind of trying to judge your environment, sometimes that's important, you know? But in many cases, like I think kind of what he's getting at, it's just not a good way of, uh, it's not a good way of trying to judge whether the country is doing well or not when you literally live in one of the richest cities in all of human history. Right. And probably one of the richest areas, I'm just gonna guess. Yeah, yeah. He, he does. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to go to Farmville, Virginia. I mean, go to Southwest DC. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's not far away. You but. know, but the reality is, yeah, it's never been easier to isolate yourself in your own little bubble mm -hmm. without even meaning to do it. With it just as a, you know, product of your class status and where you live and the schools you choose to send your kids to. Bill Maher doesn't have kids, so this is a, a generalization right. I'm talking about here. But the stores you shop at, I mean, for, for many upper class people or even upper middle class people, their only interaction with the working class is like when their Uber Eats is delivered or when they're you know talking to their Uber driver to the extent that they deign to do so or when they're getting their Starbucks coffee. They don't live in the same neighborhoods. They oftentimes, you know, don't share our same, the same culture anymore. Their whole experience of the difficulty of living in America is has so wildly diverged. And I do think that's the important piece that really comes out here. And so when Marianne says, you know, I, I do you know where I was last night? I was mm -hmm. on Skid Row. And he's like, well, why would you go there? I mean, that kind of shows the whole thing. It becomes so easy to just avoid the unpleasantness. And, you know, if you're not going to parts of the country also that have been devastated that are in the struggle. And I get it. I mean, America is this weird, I mean, this weird place right now. We have incredible affluence that's on display everywhere in all kinds of ways. And then you have just underneath the surface rising insecurity every single month. The number of people who are relying on food banks, the number of people who can't make rent. In that state of California, 16, only 16% 16 of people can even afford a home, 16%. So you have to be privileged just to like sniff the idea of becoming a homeowner not to mention the suicide rate we just talked about, not to mention the overdose and addiction rate, not to mention the, you know, the vast suffering that has continued to creep up as pandemic era programs have been stripped away. A trillion dollars in credit card debt mm -hmm. hanging over people's heads at this point. So, but yeah, I, I do think that probably the most important takeaway, as you said, Sagar, is just how easy it is now for you to isolate yourself without intending to, without being a bad person, yeah. without trying to live in a bubble people end up living in a bubble and they don't even realize it. You that. have to understand that you have to constantly self check yourself if you are, uh, if you ever do find yourself in that uh, type of situation. Otherwise, you know, I mean, this is why people literally out of touch is a very common phrase. That's how it happens. It's sim it's very simple, especially if you're somebody who's been kind of at the top of life now for almost 25 years, like you're living in a totally different reality. I also would say uh, one of the problems that we often assume is we're like, oh, well, that person looks like they're doing well. Well, yeah, because they might have two or $3,000 in credit card debt. They might have, you know, a quarter of a million dollars of debt to their name. So in many cases, I've, I have found this, is that, you know, somebody appears to be doing well, and then all of a sudden they disappear. And you're like, wait, what happened? And it's like, oh, well, you know, they were crazy in debt. They had to move home, lost this or that. And you're like, oh my God, like, that's crazy. Because you realize that, you know, you can, this whole keeping up with the Joneses thing is basically financed on the back of the banks and then the credit card industry. Sure. So you, even if people do appear to be doing well, you have no idea what that actual balance sheet looks like. And, you know, eventually bills do come do and you know we have areas things like 2008 and, and all of that uh, that eventually kind of become clarifying moments but they blow up a lot of people's lives and then you really start to understand what was going on beneath the surface the last thing i'll say is you know i've been talking a lot about how la county um where bill maher yep. lives where that conversation was unfolding is the hotbed right now of militant labor activity and strikes a majority of the strike activity that's happened in this country has happened in LA County, and there's a reason for that. So he does it, he should just, you know, go talk to some of the hotel workers that are on strike who are having to commute 90 minutes both ways and still struggling to make ends meet, or, you know, the gentleman who was homeless because he wasn't able to get into the industry and cobble together enough to be able to make rent even 90 minutes away. There's a lot of struggle out there if you know where to look and you choose to see it. 
But, you know, if you're a person of means who lives in a certain, you know, ne neighborhood and society, you actually have to actively choose to see it or else it will be completely invisible to you. 100%. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.